Gary, welcome. nice to meet you. Doing good. Excellent. And kind of dip. I just talked to your wife and said you you're going up to Freeport now. That's a routine run for me. Oh, is it? It's five and a half to pain ass. Is it? Oh, great. No, no, easy ride. But you got a couple little spins right there. Got to go through Baton Rouge just to pain in the ass a little bit. You're going to hit the run around 530, so it won't be fun. Great. But don't I, rush. I love cities. One of those deals. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I appreciate you just, you know, coming down. Yeah, sure. I've been uh, actually following you. I've never taken a lesson in my life. That's the first Ooh. thing. Yeah, never have. Followed your little thing for about a year or two, and then I got on last year. My biggest problem is that I probably got ADD or some shit, you know, because, <laughs> you know, it's hard for me just to, to keep up with everything, and that's why I carry, which I think you need to come up with, suggestion, I carry a little cheat sheet. Yeah. See, because if I don't carry a cheat sheet, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> you know, because you know when you get out there, you know, you can only think about, I, I, I can only have two or three things on my mind. Sure. You're you know, ahead of me. I can only have one, so well, you're better than me. there you go. So now, you know, you know I'm stretching it. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those things where uh, I've done halfway decent. Uh, Game-wise, uh, I'm about a solid four. Oh, good. Yeah, pretty decent player yeah. for not ever doing shit. For not taking a lesson. Yeah, exactly. Good. Been an athlete all my life. I'm 60, I'll be 65. It's just one of these things where I learned, I have learned, that I got to keep the ball in play. Uh, you know, because I play I, uh, a lot of metal tournaments, you know, older assholes like us, you know, just metal. You know, so I've learned to kind of cut out the distance a little bit in order just to keep me in between the white stakes. Sure. You know, and where I am right now is just, uh, I've tried a little bit of everything. A little bit of a stack and tilt guy there for a while. I actually liked it, but I didn't get any better. Oh, what the hell? That's so hard to do. You know, when you get to be single digits, it's so hard to get a lot better. Sure. Unless you just pound on it. And I'm not a good pounder. Right. Okay. But I'm going to try to improve on that. Maybe another couple of years when I can start getting a little bit more time, even though I'm a decent amount of time now. It's not too bad. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I love the concept. I always played through athletic ability, but when I got on your deal, at least now I feel like under pressure a little bit, I get, at least I feel like I kind of know what at least I'm doing, and it helps me under pressure a little bit. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense or not, you know, where, where before I think I was just, look, I've done all kind of bullshit, I've had ten finger grips, I, look, <laughs> guy told me I had the worst grip God ever created. <laughs> You know, look, I had one of these space jobs. Look, I had one of these underneath here, and I was just lucky enough to get it around. And I could score pretty good. Good shot game, pretty good pop. And that's really the story of my golf game. All it's right. not like, you know, uh, other than that, it's not like, yeah. All right, well, let's watch you in a couple. Let's get a couple okay. on video and see what's going on now, and see how we get you to that next level. What do you want to hit? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What do you want to hit? All right. It makes no difference to me. And you know, I think one of my biggest issues that I think I have, I got a little trouble releasing the ball, okay. releasing the club. Okay. You know, uh, I probably just... Why do you think that is? I don't know. I, well, number two, I think when I keep it real loose and just my little three fingers down here, which I like that little, you know, it, it allows me at least, because probably the number one problem for me, like probably with so many golfers, I just get tense, yeah, exactly. especially under the heat. I just tense up a little bit and, you know, want to fire the right side with the right hand and the right arm and everything. So, sure. so that hurts a little bit. I'm sure it hurts a lot, not a little. <laughs> but it helps me a little bit when I do the three finger thing a little bit so I can just glide on the other stuff. See that scoop underneath there? You know, I love the nine here, then right up in here, of course, then I do some kind of a, you know, and I just hold on. Sure. Just because I'm sure I haven't done your nine to three enough. Well, that was moving up in front of it, I'm sure, huh? Looks like it. And actually, about a month ago, I almost died. 
What? Yeah, I got, it was my first time I have only played one 18 holes in the last 30 days because I, I got rear-ended on the causeway, guy going 60 in the fall. Oh, you're Look, kidding. I tore my Achilles here. I've been under PT for the last 30 days. It's really helped me. And I, I just took an MRI on my back. I got a, a little issue, but nothing, hopefully, serious. All right. I almost died. It was weird. Jeez. Almost, almost went into water. <laughs> That's scary. All right. So, first things first, not a lot of turn going back there, but a lot of right arm folds. You're losing a lot of width. In this room. That's correct. Right. And then as you go back, you probably won't finish your turn, which you don't. So, you're halfway there. You're almost done with your turn, but you're only halfway there. Right, right. So, now we've got to have virtually no power. You got good lag coming down, so you got good club awareness and control, but then a pretty good right hand flip there. At the bottom. Lip scooper. Yeah, big right hand flip. So, problem number one, no rotation. Problem number two, we don't have any rotation. You feel like you got to do something to get any speed out of it, which is going to be your old right hand trying to help out. Yeah, it's the same way. That's all my cheat sheet. Is okay. obviously really uh, is kind of like to pull instead of push. Yeah. So I don't forgot that's a make out here just two seconds with, with the guy who invented it or whatever. <laughs> that goes to show you. <laughs> All right. So the body just isn't didn't, didn't doing anything. You're making basically a just kind of a little armsy swing. A little swing. arm swing, yeah. exactly. The body's not helping you at all. So let's see if we can change that. So the first thing we'd want to tackle is getting you to rotate going back. If you don't rotate going back, it's not going to really happen on the way down either. So when you go back, the thing that you need to feel is that that right arm stays straight all the way to the top of the swing. Your right elbow is never going to bend. The right arm stays straight. right arm is going to stay straight the whole swing. What it's going to feel like to you. We're not going to hit any balls for a second. I want you just to get... So, you, so you, yeah. So that, you know, I kind of remember, that's what I used to do in, in the one piece type of thing I used to do. I used to be so worried about keeping everything so, you know, yeah. and it probably helped me. I'd probably look better anyway. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and set up for me, and all I want you to try and do to move that golf club is turn your chest to the to the back to the camera while letting your arms just follow along with your body. So right there is what a normal. If you found that you started to lose club head speed as you've gotten older, listen up, especially if you're over 50 years old, because the number one reason that most golfers in their 50s start to lose club head speed actually happens during the first 12 inches of club head movement. That's right. Just going from here to here can make or break your golf swing and make sure that you start losing power as you get older. And if you don't want to do that, you have to do one thing, and that is you've got to recruit enough muscle fiber to produce power. Now that sounds like a convoluted way of trying to explain something in a really complex way that should be really simple. The truth is the golf swing is really simple, but we have to have some basic understanding of biomechanics and anatomy in order to get that club to do what we need it to do. And during the backswing, the one thing that nearly all golfers start to do as they get older and they stop exercising as much and they start losing flexibility, all of a sudden, instead of making any turn to move the club, they just set their wrists, arms, shoulders, and now halfway back, they look like this. Now, how much have I turned at this point? Well, hardly any at all. The only reason I've turned at all is just the momentum of the club has pulled my shoulders around. That's the tail wagging the dog. You want to be the dog wagging the tail. Don't let this control you. You need to control it. And in order to do that, you have to start moving your body during the backswing. You have to start rotating and recruiting muscle from here because this doesn't do anything to your trunk. Your, the golf swing happens from the ground up and it's your legs, your core, your trunk that produces the real effortless power in the swing. But when golfers start doing this during the backswing, you can see my right wrist is set, my right elbow is bent, my shoulder starting to load up. So as I make this narrow swing going back, well, I'm fully loaded up. Why would I turn at this point? All of a sudden, it's not going to feel right. So now, as I make this narrow backswing, all I'm going to do is just have all arms and hands coming down. And that's exactly what you're going to see in today's Roadshow lesson, is that that narrow swing robs you of any power that you could possibly make in your swing because you're only making half a turn, which means you're only recruiting a fraction of the muscle fiber that you need to produce power in the swing. To make your swing truly effortless and powerful and maintain speed as you get older, it's critical that you start working on rotation to move that club and maintaining width. 
And that's what today's bonus video is gonna show you is how to make a simple two inch movement to get the club started off on the right foot so that when you start getting older and start losing flexibility, you'll realize you really don't need that much flexibility to swing correctly and recruit enough muscle fiber to hit the ball further than you did when you were in your 20s or 30s. It's all about leveraging mechanics and that's what's gonna be the key to you maintaining speed as you get older. Think of what you should feel like. This is straight and wide. Normally, or on that video there, your hands, when the club staff is parallel to the ground, were right here. So there's a huge Just difference. didn't get any width in the thing. You didn't have any width, but you don't try and manufacture width. Width is created by you not doing anything with your arms and just rotating your chest. Right? If you didn't know anything about golf and I said, don't move your arms at all, and you just said turn, well, that's pretty darn wide, right? Right. So all you're doing is just doing something and you need to do less. Leave your arms out of it, turn your body. The and then of course, yeah, and then it helps when you get any tension off of it. You're just kind of moving it like that. It's just easier to do instead of yeah, well, you're, when you get under pressure, the thing that's going to happen for guys who swing the club like you, it's going to be the same for every single one. Your swing's going to get shorter and shorter shorter, and right. shorter, all right? So that's the last thing on earth we want to do. We want to focus on turning. Excellent. And keep turning all the way to the top. And we're going to square the right arm and that's what it's going to feel like. We're almost, that's a full turn. Yeah. There's no doubt. And I hit it better when I do do that. You know, I've kind of looked at most of them. And I guess what bothers me a little bit at times is that I probably lose my plane a little bit, you know, because I'm trying to make so much. This has got to be moving. Because like you said, I'm not used to it. So yeah. it probably throws me off a little bit. Yeah, it's going to feel pretty big and disjointed to you at first. Typically. There you go. Right. Good. Nice, that's really good. Keep doing that. It's my, my famous one that I like, obviously, is you know trying to keep my weight right where it needs to be back here a little bit instead of yeah, you know, you know okay. hanging up over the top because it's yeah. easy to get there. You know, athletically you want to attack. You 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 know you want to just I, I, you know same like you say on all the videos. You know I want to attack the ball. I want to attack everything, and of course. You kind of can't do that in golf. No, not if you finish your weight shift to the right and you'll find you can get another 10 or 20 degrees of turn when you shift your weight to your right. Okay, now, you feeling like, I try to do it right over this. So if you watched the first bonus video, you've learned how a simple two inch movement can recruit more muscle fiber than anything else you're doing when you're just trying to set the club with your arms and hands and shoulders. So if you want power, you've got to make sure you watch that bonus video. However, there's one more key piece in making that full turn that's critical not only for power, but for setting the swing plane and path during the backswing and downswing, and that is weight shift. Now, weight shift for a lot of golfers is the crux of the swing. In fact, it's the reason that the rotary swing five-step system actually starts, step one, is with weight shift. It's that important to the swing, not just in the downswing, but in the backswing as well, because as you're going to see in this roadshow lesson, when you don't shift your weight going back, it's virtually impossible unless you're extremely flexible to make a full turn. So as you're gonna see, we talk about this right hip line. And this right hip line is basically saying, as you'll see in the bonus video, that this hip, when viewed from face on, should never look like it moves this way or this way. It should appear that it stays in the same spot during the whole backswing. But in order to do that, you actually have to shift. And I'll explain why in the video, but what you're gonna start feeling is that as you shift a little bit more to the right, it's much easier to make a much bigger turn versus when you hang on the left side. When you hang on the left, oh, that's as far as I can turn. But as soon as I shift, that's only about you know, 75 degrees, as soon as I shift to the right, look how the turn opens up and I get another 20 or 30 degrees of rotation. You know rotation is important from the bonus video. It's critical for recruiting muscle fiber and weight shift is gonna help you get there. So make sure you watch this bonus video. Click the link you see up in the corner. That's gonna take you to the, a bonus video on right hip line to get you set up in a way that's gonna make it very easy for you to make a very powerful turn and increase your swing speed as you get older rather than lose it. Think so much about that. I want you to think about just smashing your foot into the ground. Okay. Like you're trying to crush my fingers under your foot. Not to the outside though. Not to the outside, to the inside? 
No, you're gonna go to the middle of the foot. Middle. But you never want to go on the outside. Okay, stay right there. Shift your weight to the right. There. You feel the difference there? <laughs> yeah, that ACL surgery. Okay. <laughs> and something just all moved all over my damn knee because it's probably never happened before. <laughs> You'll find that when you, if you don't shift your weight at all, like if you just kind of hang on the left side, just exaggerate when you hang on the left side as you go back. All right, so right now you turn about 45 degrees. And you'll right. feel pretty strained doing that. Yes. Like you won't, you'll feel like you can't really get any more out of it. Right. So that's what everybody does. You turn about halfway when you hang on the left side. Now if you let your hips shift just a hair to the right as you go back. Right, just the old. Almost there. One more time. Okay, stay right there. Now go all the way to the top, stop. Shift over to the right. And now finish your turn. Yeah, that's definitely a lot of turning. You're turn you're stopping at about 80 degrees. Right. Even when you feel like you're making partly because there's no momentum, right? We're going to the top and stop. If there's pace to it, you're always gonna turn a little bit further than you think. The average guy can do that? They can all do it. Wow, that's pretty that's pretty cool. Is, that, is do, that turning? Do it one more time. Okay, your weight's not on the right foot. You need 80% of your weight to go to that right foot. The reason you're this far from making a full turn, and you're this far from shifting your weight to your right, but your hip is actually moving away. So come over, let's actually stand right here for a second. My hip is moving away? Yeah. Let's see if I can get my hip over here. So I want you to put your butt, okay. you're gonna stand kind of like this, right. and your hip's gonna be against this. And as you go back, I don't want your hip to move away from that. turn there. So all you've got to do is make that your priority as you're going back. Let your weight shift to the right, narrow your stance up. Wait, wait, wait. Still too bad. Still too bad. Okay, stop right there. Where's your weight? Well, it's kind of like right here. Exactly. Like over there. Hmm. Yeah, there's no doubt it's easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's easier to get to this side when you, is that way you put, say, the hip bump? You know, kind of like a little bit of the hip bump in the, in the setup? No. No, that's not it, okay. No, just... it has to do with something completely different. It has to do with plane and a bunch of other stuff. But, okay. but it does, it is important if you were to lean this way and you had no access to it, it's going to feel really hard to make a turn. So it does help facilitate that a little bit. You see how I'm right. There you go. Good. Now, close there. Okay, I just shift your hip over just a hair. There you go. Now, stay there. I want you to turn as far as you feel comfortable. Now, shift over to the right just a little bit. And it should buy you a little bit more rotation to turn. You got your knees kind of low-legged though, but you're making it really awkward to, to move naturally. Yeah, just let them sit naturally. There you go. Well, it's and like also you're trying to like lock your lower body in place. Well, yeah. I mean, also, well, uh, you know, I, I I try to do as much as I can with my legs, which in turn, you know, when you very self-conscious of my legs, I'm it probably builds a little tension in me because I'm trying to, gotcha. you know, I, I I'm trying to, as you would say. You know, hit with the ground and do whatever. Gotcha. Yeah, so that yeah. that probably builds a little bit in me. Sure. You know, from uh. Stay nice and relaxed, for now. Let's 
Let, go back to address. Just let it stay right. You have a tendency to kind of like stick it and splay them out like this. But right. now all of a sudden, your body, your lower body can't move now. So just let it, let it be natural. Almost, but your weight's still hanging on the left side. Closer. I want you to almost feel, especially as an exaggeration right now, that when you get to the top, you can pretty much lift your left foot up without too much trouble. All the way off the ground. Literally lift it all the way off the ground. There you go. That's weight transfer. Okay, and now do that by combined making the turn. So make the turn first, and then lift your left foot up in there. Stop the gas in your weight or you can't lift your left foot up right now, you can't move it with all your weight over there. All the way up in the air. Not there. You don't have to lift it that high, but here's what you're doing. You're doing this and then you're doing this. You still got tons of weight there. It doesn't do you any good. Shift. And then when you're here, just lift your left leg. You shouldn't have to move very much to get that foot up here. Okay, you shift your weight, let me see. So all I'm doing is making a little shift to the right. And now I'm, I've made a big turn here. And I'm just gonna lift my left foot. That way, if I know if I barely have to do much to unweight it, but the majority of my weight's on that side. That's not, uh, see, I get you should feel like you barely have to move to lift that left foot up. Only about 20, 15, 20% of your weight's gonna be on this foot at the top of your swing. 80 to 85% is gonna be on that right leg. And that's what frees you up to make a turn. Turn, 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 turn. There you go, that's a big turn. Huge turn. That's a hundred, that's a Jamie Sadlowski turn there. <laughs> that you can do it. But when you're anchored. All right, today's final fundamental on increasing swing speed. As you get older and you turn, get into the 50s and 60s, as you start losing flexibility, it's really more, even more important as you get older to master the proper fundamentals of the swing because you don't need a massive amount of flexibility. In fact, you just need average flexibility with rotary swing in order to make a full turn because we're gonna teach you how to do it the most efficient way, the way your body's designed to move. One of those key points, we talked about the right hip line, we talked about that shoulder blade glide in the bonus videos. The next one is stance width. So many golfers make it virtually impossible for them to make a full turn and a full shift because their stance is too wide. Stance width is predicated on your pelvis width. It has nothing to do with the width of your shoulders and it has nothing to do with the club that you're swinging, believe it or not. Stance width is based on your anatomy because it's critical for a proper stance width in order to make a proper weight shift. If your stance is too wide and you make a weight shift, well, your head's gonna be moving all over the place. So that just makes golf 10 times harder. We don't need to have a moving target, so I want my head to stay centered over that ball. It can move a little bit off the ball, but if I take a wide stance and then try to make a full turn, well, I've gotta shift a lot to move off and move off the ball. We obviously don't want that. So with rotary swing, we t teach you how to find the perfect stance width for every club in the bag using the bi biomechanical fundamentals of how your body is built. So make sure you take a look at this bonus video. It's gonna tell you how to get the perfect stance width and show you why it's so critical to help you produce power as you get older because you need to make sure that you can make a full turn without your head moving all over the place and make sure you shift your weight in order to do that. With a wide stance, it's virtually impossible. Check out this bonus video. It's gonna show you how to find your perfect stance width. So that's why I just keep all this stuff in. Yeah, move. So, so that's it. why I really don't have any power probably with my drop. You're gonna have zero power because you're making half the turn. You're recruiting half the muscle that you need to recruit. Right. You know, my my irons are not that bad. You know, I mean I can hit you know my seven iron, you know, 155, you know, it's reasonable, yeah. you know, something decent. The driver, you know, I'm driving about, you know, 230, 235, but she's in play at least. <laughs> at least I can say that much. You know, 89, 90% of the time, which is 
relax your knees. There you go. Which is pretty good. There you go. And I guess the idea that the uh, you know the old back at the target routine. I guess, because, I guess because I'm picking it up, it makes me feel a little bit easier to get to the other side. Well, you're turning your hips a lot. We don't want to turn our hips a lot. Exactly right. You want to do this. If you well, turn your upper body. Watch me for a second. Watch my hips. How much did they move? The hips didn't move, I don't know, 10%. Not a lot, right? Yeah, right. And I can lift that foot up. You're just trying to do like all kinds of stuff in the lower body. Upper body, it's going to turn. Relax. Turn. Lift that left foot up. All the way up in the air. You've got to get out of the idea of hanging on this left side because as soon as you do that, it's really hard to make a full turn. It doesn't really feel like it's that bad, but I know it's there. There you go. Good. There you go. It's getting closer. swing you should still be touching are you touching it no nope. there you go that's a reverse hip shift you're just trying to stay sit there you go do it without your head moving and you got it exactly right which is what I have found at times when I was trying to make yeah when I was trying to make very subconsciously you're trying to make a good turn this obviously was moving out, you fat a little bit, you know, and you get a little disgusted in the middle of the round. Fuck, I can't, I can't afford fucking doing three shots in the middle of the fucking goddamn round. It ain't gonna happen. Narrow yeah. your stance. Narrow your stance. Even narrower. There you go. The wider your stance is, the harder it is to shift your weight and the harder it is to turn, right? I'm standing like this. My hips don't want to move, right? And then I really don't want to shift. I make a nice, normal, narrow stance where it's two inches outside of neutral. That weight shift is tiny. Why does Tiger and all those guys have such wide stances? They don't. Tiger stands like this with an iron. Until a Foley got to him and then I won't go there. But Maybe I'm talking about his driver or some shit. Well, with the driver, we're have totally different objectives. And we're trying to create a positive angle of attack. So as you're standing a little bit wider with the driver, it helps shallow out the bottom of the arc. That's a specialty club. The nine to three drill, this is paramount. The whole thing you're gonna do during that first move to nine o'clock is shift your weight and turn. Right? So the same amount of weight transfer you're doing here is gonna basically be there in that nine to three drill. Yeah, and I feel it's, it's relatively easy in the nine to three. Yeah. I'm sure I'm not doing it as much as I need to be doing it, but I do feel like I am moving some of it. Sure. Um, but yes, this thing is obviously a good little reminder yeah, it'll that, let you know right away. That, yeah, you don't want to be pushing it out. You just want to be rubbing it slightly. Bingo. That's and then you want to be bingo. basically staying with it, of yep. course. Yeah, very good. So, yeah, which definitely... So that's going to help you feel a lot more load on that side, help you start recruiting... And there's no doubt, body. like, obviously, the narrower the stance, it is the easier, I think, to to probably feel a little loose you know, with your swing and everything. Yeah, well you were, I'm exaggerating, but you were standing like yeah, this, no, like I'm yeah. not gonna move, right? Yeah. And if you're gonna swing all arms, that's helpful, but your lower body is totally taken out of the swing. There you go. Good, you're really good keeping your hip on there now. Yeah, I mean, it's feeling pretty good now. I'm sure I still got a little bit over here, I'm sure. You're gonna have, you know, 15, 20% over there. But See, I mean, you, were, that, you were kind of 50-50 at the top right. earlier. No, I mean, that, that feels pretty good. Good. There you go. I'm going to take this away from you for a second and see if you can do it without it. Nope. I moved an inch off that way. That way. Yeah. Try it again. 
There you go. Feel a little different? Yeah, it did feel a little bit different. So I want you to recognize. It also them. felt like, like you said, I, was, I felt a little bit more pressure into the ground there a little bit, which obviously made it a little easier. Good. That's what I want you to feel. You, having a training aid is great, but training aids are useless when you take them away if you didn't recognize the feeling Correct. that we're trying to create. That makes sense, no problem. Good. Yeah, I man, I'm feeling it pretty good right there, so that's good. Okay. Pretty good there. Now, I want you to try and come on back up on the mat for a second, but just your arms only, and I want you to go back like you are, but try to make a downswing now, because obviously your arms aren't involved, but I want you to start to wake up your body as you come down. Okay, your body coming down, legs coming down. Okay, stop right there. So, this is what I wanted to see. When you started down, I said make your downswing. All you did was this. All shoulders, no lower body whatsoever. Right. So this is where all your power has gone in your swing. You're relying on nothing but your arms and hands to hit it. So go to the top again. Get loaded up on that right side. Good. Now shift to the left and straighten that left leg up. Post up. Your left, other left leg. Left leg. Your other left. Left. left this, one. this one. Yep. That post left. up. That left one. Yep. As you open your hip, because your shoulders are square. Your legs. There's the kicker. Open my hips with my shoulders square. There's the kicker. It's just this. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying. Open it up because I think what happens when I get out there, I'm trying to stay down, and when, you know, and when, when I try to, everything comes up. Right. You know what that means? Yeah. It's the old old right job. <laughs> you know. So. There. Stop right there. Almost perfect. Relax the right leg. There you go. Shoulder square. Left. Open up the left hip. Straighten the right. Hip. This is your impact. Again. Stop, where's your weight? It's still on your right foot. You know how I know? Because the toe box of your shoe is creased. There's too much weight back there. Narrow up your stance. Let's, let's oblige me for one moment. Let's go really narrow for a second. There you go. Not quite that narrow, but just right there's perfect. We're gonna exaggerate this. I want you to feel weight shift again. Mm -hmm. There and down. Is that easy was to shift your weight? Yeah, a lot easier for sure. Yeah. So let's do a few more like this. Just get used to this. I want you to get comfortable with your feet. Your weight moving between your feet again. You've done such a good job of locking them in cement that you know, we can't use them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed I was going to be good. We wouldn't want to throw you off a pier anyway. You'd sink for sure. There's no doubt about that, bro. That's for damn sure. Left leg, left hip, right heel down, right heel down, right heel. There you go. Straighten the left leg. Left leg has got to be straight. Straight. There. Yeah, see, I, that's never even brought into my equation ever. I've never even heard of that. <laughs> what I'm just saying, I've never. Now, I, I, like I tell you, I do remember every once in a while when I try to hit it, you know, and, and anything like this would always, for me, never seem to go straight because I'm pulling everything up and then yeah. and, and my shot is going, you know, up in the other direction. Narrow up your stance. You're, you're looking at the wrong things for feedback. You're relying on, you're, you do something that you think or you're interpreting of doing something a certain way, like posting up, right. like every single tour player does, right? Every, every tour player pushes that left foot into the ground and straightens that left foot. Post up and this stays down. That straightens up. Yeah, this straights yeah, up and this right. stays down. But well, then, so reasonably you, down through impact. So you hit a shot where you're doing something that you think is what you're supposed to do, posting up, and you see a certain ball flight result. And you're like, oh, well, that can't be it. You might have done it perfect, but you have other compensations in your swing that don't work with the proper fundamentals. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> if I'd have did all this perfectly and did the nine to three, it probably would have worked out just fine. Shit, you know? Exactly, but that, this is where you have to do the fundamentals right. There's little stuff of shifting to the right, Shifting back to the left and posting up is critical. Straighten that left knee. There you go. It's gonna be all the way straight. Right heel down. There you go. Okay, where your where's your chest pointing? My chest is kind of right up in here. Should be pointing. Should be here, exactly. right? Exactly. Well, at at impact, and like you said, it, it'll move a little bit, but it's psychologically it needs to be thinking there. It needs it needs to physically be there. 
stop right there. You get great on the lower body, but the shoulders are going to be right here at impact. And that's what you say every once in a while about staying a little slow, let it catch up, you know, whatever, don't rush it. Well, your shoulders don't do anything. You're just trying to help out. So I would imagine if you did try to post up and you keep showing me that you want to turn your shoulders, the ball would go high right at the same time. Right, right. But if you keep your shoulders back, the club then has a chance to release. Left hip, left leg, post up, stop right there. Now look at your chest is pointing open again. So go to the top for me. Just your lower body, just your left leg, shift. Shift over, shift over, shift, shift your hips over. Post up on that left leg. Straighten the left knee. Straight. You're done. That's it. Right wheel down. Right wheel down. There you go. Straighten your left knee. There. You don't want to use that left leg. Of course, it'd probably be a little bit easier if my head wasn't down here by my drawers. <laughs> you know, it'd probably be just a shade easier. Now don't turn your chest. Nah. No. There you go. Excellent. Way better. That feels a little bit better there. A little bit more. Got to get that hip open up. The left leg's got to get straight. Get your Stop right there. You're, you've got to shift over all the way to where that left hip is over that left ankle. And straighten the left knee. You're doing a good job. Yeah, rotating up. your hips, but you're staying back on the right side. So once you shift to the right, then you got to shift back to the left. Right heel down, pushing all off your right leg. Which you don't want to be pushing off the right leg. No, nope. you're going to use the left leg to help you shift back. Right, because right, that's what also probably pushes it out just a hair. Exactly. Yeah. I went the whole round just, I don't know, a month and a half ago. I didn't have it on my cheat sheet to keep my right ankle down. I mean, my right foot down. It really, I went through a little period of there that I just tore it up because I, I kept my that right down on these on these, you know, eight irons, seven irons. You know, you know where you don't have to quite you get your little 140, 150, 160, but it really helps you keep it like you know up the line or whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just say it just keeps you in balance. It keeps instead you of, under control. Instead of, yeah, sure. under control. That's yeah. just the right word. For sure. Let's narrow up that stance. Even a little narrower. There you go. Ah, where's your chest point? Yeah, it's out here. Your chest is going to point straight down at the dirt. If you don't turn your chest at all and you just turn your hips, your chest on the bed square every time. Left to left. Shift over, on over, post up, all the way straight with this guy. And you got, ah, don't turn your shoulders. You had it right there. Yeah. There you go. Don't turn my shoulders. Oh, shit. Whew, that's hard to do there. Well, what's ironic is you don't turn your shoulders at all in your real swing. Your shoulders and everything are dead square at impact. So you're just trying to do something that you don't actually normally do. Straighten up that left knee and you're done. That's the whole swing. You just gotta shift over a little bit more laterally to the left, but not lift your chest. Just turn your hips. Move your hips without me. Move without moving your shoulders. There you go. If you were to throw a ball, what would the sequence be? You're gonna throw a ball from left field to home plate. What would you do? Go through, jump walking through the whole thing. I mean, obviously, I pick up the ball. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with the basic, and then I would What's, walk then, me through the whole thing. Okay, I and mean, obviously, I'd pick up the ball, yeah. and then I would load up a little bit and throw. Okay. Okay. So if you're gonna throw a ball all the way to home plate, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna load up on that right leg. There's no doubt. Okay. Second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna step to the yeah, left. Yes, so I'm gonna step down so I can. And you're gonna transfer a ton of weight over that left leg. Yeah, but I'm, these shoulders are going to come with me though, 9 out of 10 times. But if you're going to do it right, I'm going to shift, step. My shoulders are going to stay back while my hip pivots. And that right, exactly. turns my chest for me. Right. And that's what I want you to feel. Step to the left and pivot your hips to me. And that'll bring your shoulders with you. Turn your hips. Right there, you're done, right there. You're done. Right heel down, you got it. Perfect. There you go.
Much better. The dynamics and the sequence of hitting a golf ball and throwing a ball have a lot of similarities. They're not identical, but there's a lot of similarities. Nice. Right heel down, it's perfect. Right heel down. Still pushing off that right foot. Right heel, right, right heel down. Good. Good. It feels a little better. So show yeah. me if you can do the turn. You keep your arms straight. And then use the left hip to bring the arms down. Good. Watch your arms again, going back. Keep it nice and wide. Finish your turn, just a great turn there, good. Left hip. You're not quite shifting laterally far enough to the left. Yeah, I, I can feel it, but I, my weight's not there. It's only like about 40, 50%. Exactly. And the wider your stance is, the harder it's gonna be. Exaggerate, bring it in a couple more inches. There you go. Let's just make the weight shift really simple so we can get the feel for it. All the way over to the left. I'll tell you now. You know, I've had knee injuries. Mm -hmm. All kind of shit moving around down there, bro. Whoa. Let me see what's going on with him. Tell me where you feel something. No, I'm not feeling it right there, but you know, it's you. When I went to orthopedic about a year and a half, two years ago, I wanted to make sure that I've had two ACLs. 28 to 35 years ago, that's beside the point. But I want to make sure how many chips were moving all over the damn place on the inside to the lock up and that. Yeah. And I, you know, I wanted to make sure I didn't need any kind of a knee replacement and all this other stuff. <laughs> Doc tells me, he says, well, do you have any problem going to the bathroom at 3.30 in the morning? <laughs> okay. That's what the guy said. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? I said, can you get out on your own power, go to the bathroom and shit and do whatever? I said, yeah, I'm in pretty good shape there. I don't have to hold on to nothing. He goes, then you don't need a hip replacement. Because he's, I mean a knee replacement. Because he said, you won't be satisfied. It's for people who have, you know, can't get to the bathroom without falling down or some shit, you know? Really? Okay. Because when you go through all of that trouble, then you see significant improvement. Gotcha. He says, with the little bit of improvement you have, you won't need that. We orthoscopic a little bit, do it a quarter, get out a few little things there, and then, you know, everybody, you'll be a little bit better. So. Right, gotcha. But I didn't do it, so that's beside the point. He's, oh, I didn't really need to, so. Narrow up the stance, get too wide. See, so all up in there, I could feel my, my bones rubbing on, rubbing on yeah, bones a little I bit. I saw what was going on there, so again, when you do that, you're not letting your hip shift over to the right, so you're probably going to be moving off of that bench again. Okay. Yeah, see, I, I forgot about the bench already. So we can put it back there. But, you, but, but goes to show you, though. What was that? The reps. What was that, 15 minutes? <laughs> well, we need the repetition, right? 15 so minutes, forgot about the bench already. That's okay. Isn't that a poor deal, huh? <laughs> that feels a little better. What's it gonna cost me to get? To, I just want like 103, 105. Shit, I just want. <laughs> I don't even want much. Well, you know, I got a little 96, 98. You know, if I get lucky in my driver, you know, whatever. So the whole reason you don't, you simply don't have two things in your swing. You don't have enough time to accelerate the club because your swing is so short and short, long, right. compact, right? Which actually makes sense. I mean, I, there's physically not enough time. If you if you take it back to here, you're just not gonna accelerate that, far, right? So that's problem one. Problem two is that if you don't recruit enough muscle fiber, you can't move the club fast enough. It's muscles that move the golf club. So by you feeling loading up on your right side and loading in your course now because you're turning, this is a wake, and that is where you're gonna get all that speed back. There you go. Yeah, it's pretty. So you load up going back, 
big turn, way bigger than what you're used to, like double what you're used to. Loading, shifting. I was very self-conscious of that. I mean, look at the sham boat he's got. This motherfucker's doing this, look. <laughs> now I'm not saying, you know, that's not for everybody. That's beside the point. The point is, I mean, I play with a guy who actually, you know, mimics him and whatever. He's straight, he's pretty good. You know, and he's, he doesn't move off. But, you know, he's got that total big, you know, it looks like the, as we call it, the diamond. Keep the diamond, you know, as long as you say, yeah. as you can, and it just helps you. Yeah. I mean, you still gotta have the rest of the bullshit that goes along with it, but. <laughs> you do. Yes. There's no doubt that, you know, the, the narrow stance is gonna help me. I'm gonna try to, you gotta put that on the cheat sheet. Yeah, it just makes the weight shift stuff way, way easier. Hanging back on the right side there when you're coming down. So you've got to make an effort to shift into that left leg. Sit into, there you go. Better. Come on over to the left. There you go. Post up on it and release. Narrow up that stance. Good. Good. Let's try it with a club for a second. Might want to move that thing out just in case we. In case I luck out and hit one. <laughs> All right, so just practice swing, but I want to see wide going back so that right arm is going to stay straight the whole time. You're going to focus on making a big turn. That's all we want to try. Okay, right arm folded too soon. Right arm folded yeah. too soon. It's going to stay straight the whole time. You're going to focus on turning your rib cage. Turn, turn, turn. There we go. Big turn. Big turn. Finish it. See, as I'm doing that, as I'm doing that, I'm trying to keep my, you know, the diamond. It's a little bit of weight. It's, I mean, sure. it's not much. Yeah. And you build a little tension. Flip the club upside down. Yeah. So you really got to be aware, me, and I'm sure of not building that tension, trying to keep that diamond and trying to keep it. Like, That's why we start with the club flipped upside down right. most of the time. Okay. Now you can just focus on your body. There's no mass to that club head. Big, big turn. All the way back. There you go. Nice. Now come down. Big turn. Shift to the left. Post up and release. Nice. Good. <laughs> All the way to the top. Finish your turn. Good. Shift to the left. Post up, post up, post up. There you go. Post up and release. Left knee needs to be straight before impact. That's what you're going to drill. Before impact, straighten the knee. There you go. Good. folded immediately. Yep. Now, when you go out a little bit like that. You don't want to do that. Right, exactly. Just a little bit of elevation, a little bit of vertical movement while you're turning. That's the whole trick. So go ahead and set up again. So start rotating back. A little bit of elevation. It's that, it's that level. Trying to old shake hands to Paul, but then Yeah, low. exactly. There you go. See, I'm, I can relate to that. You know, shake hands. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's just an easy thing to relate to a little bit. Sure. To try to keep my club where it needs to be. Um, of course, my cheat sheet eventually becomes. Yeah, so we got a, a cheat document now. <laughs> a cheat PDF. <laughs> Eight pages. <laughs> Email it. Hold up, wait a stuff. second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've yeah. seen it all, brother. I, oh, I no, 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 no. I a lesson with me once. I know. I don't want to think about a it. A three ring binder <laughs> that was five inches thick. Jesus. And I, I was a little concerned at first. I said, well, what's in there? It's every shot 
of every round of golf I've ever played documented. And I said, okay. I said, well, you know, just kind of. It's a little strong, man. It's, it's a bit much. I said, well, how long have you been playing? Two years. I said, okay. I wow. said, well, let's set this just to the side. And this just kind of, and, and the swing was you know, not, not ideal. And so we had a lot of work cut out for ourselves. But the golfers, we get a little crazy about stuff. But at the end of the day, all you need to focus on, rotation. There's no doubt. Shift, no me. And you can make this way simpler without needing the, the cheap PDF dock. No, there's no doubt. Right arm straight, rotate, shift, post up and release. Awesome. Good. Well, it feels pretty easy. It should you know, be. I mean, once you just you know, do it a couple hundred times or so in drills and do yep. whatever. Ah, you didn't finish your turn. And I would check where your weight is. When If you don't finish your turn, you're probably hanging a little bit on, on the left. Right, right. Right arm's folding way too early, and then you're, you're killing your turn. There you go. Does that grip look halfway decent? I, I would tweak a little bit, but I wouldn't worry about that right now. I mean, I just kind of wonder. Okay, go ahead and you set know, up for me again. But I'm saying this is about what I do. Yeah. Is that, it? That's fine there. Is it, is it, I would probably strengthen this a tiny bit. So strength, just a little bit, so it's I can. Smallest amount. Yeah. I will say. I will say sometimes when I strengthen it a little bit, it's easier for me to be in that right position as I'm right about here, you know. The problem is if your right hand's a little bit weak, let me borrow your for a second. When your right hand's a little bit weak and it gets on top of the club, you're putting yourself in a position where the right wrist wants to hinge, and when it hinges, the elbow goes with it. Does that right. make sense? So they go hand in hand. Right. When this is here, to exaggerate it, if, if I was super strong, that's going to externally rotate this elbow and then it makes it want to stay straight but when your elbow's like this it just wants to bend right but there's no doubt no with the stronger you are it looks like the easier it is to be in the right position out here shaking hands is what i'm kind of like it, it does it doesn't you know we obviously don't want a strong grip but that line going up the forearm is kind of what we're looking for yeah. so yeah so this elbow pit's going to face out and then as you rotate back that, no, you bench it right away as you rotate back this elbow pit faces the sky. If it goes, you don't have to try to exaggerate it, but it's just going to stay there. Right here. And you just keep finishing your turn. And with the elbow pit facing the sky, all you got to do is just let it hinge a little bit at the top, and it's done. Hmm. It's folding a little early. Turn, turn, turn. There you go. Keep turning as you're doing that. Turn. There you go. There we go. Well, there's no doubt I felt like I wasn't turning, that's for sure. Turn, turn, turn. Getting better. Big turn. Nice. Really good. Now shift and come down. Let's see if we feel like we can get some speed out of there. Big turn is all you're going to focus on. Good. Golf swing. I like it. That didn't feel too bad. Didn't look too bad. Moving again. Big turn. You got leverage. Well, yes, you got yeah. arc. You got width. You got speed. But if you're going to swing in a phone booth, you're not going to have any speed. I agree. No, there's no doubt. I want you to bust the glass out of this phone booth. That club should be out there by the parking lot as you're turning back. There you go. Nice. That's a turn. That felt pretty good. Yeah, we're getting there. So, Two things going back. Right arm straight and turn. That's your upper body focus yeah. stuff, right? And I see I didn't even feel that I was pulling this back, okay. which is what I do need to feel. You're making a pretty good turn, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But I think sometimes if you feel like you're pulling it back, it's a little easier for, for you. For sure. It helps initiate the turn and makes you yeah, finish. It's just, it. You know, it's it's it, it's kinda like you know what I call a couple little things that you're looking to do 
like I'm trying to keep my right ankle, you know, my right foot on the ground a little bit, you yeah, know, yeah. on so it just helps me a little bit. A little short. Yeah, a little short. I felt it. The right elbow collapsed too soon. Wide, wide, wide. There you go. You got to give yourself time. Be a little more patient to get to the top. Buy yourself that time to finish your turn. Every great player in the history of the game yeah, has a little all bit said more time thing top. about what do they want to do when they want to hit it further. I finish my turn, right? Everybody gets short and, and quick stay a little pressure. slower. Exactly. Because they know they're speeding up during the heat. Exactly. So as they feel like they're making a big turn, you just got to be patient and give yourself time to make it to the top. There you go. That felt pretty good. That was a great turn. Wide, wide, wide with that elbow. It's going to stay straight all the way to the top. Good. Makes sense, sir? Wait. Any questions for me? Huh? Any questions for me? It's been an hour. Has it really? Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun, right? <laughs> you want to hit a couple? Yeah, this well, it's all right. You can go. No problem. Uh, <laughs> I'll watch you a couple. Let me see. Well, I just want to see just exactly. All I care about is seeing if you make a turn at first, because the downswing stuff won't matter until the backswing stuff is figured out. And then I've I got to write down some notes here real quick. Sure. Big turn, right arm straight. Nice. Yes. Striped it. There you go. Go ahead. Look at that. Not too shabby. No. It actually felt pretty good, didn't it? It looked really good. I was, I'm impressed you made that big of a turn going to hit a ball. Most people would go right back to the old habits. You did great there. Okay. Well. I didn't feel 100% like I felt. Did I keep my right leg on the ground? When? I was watching just the back swing, so I didn't see the right foot. Right foot? Didn't no, really I felt good. it pretty good. Okay, I that's reasonable. Good, yeah. All right, let me get take a few notes here. One sure. Second.